So we're joined next, I'm delighted to say, by Rebecca Mayers. Rebecca is the literary manager at the Lyric Theatre in Belfast. She's our voice today from uh, Northern Ireland to talk about some of the opportunities and um, activities up in the Lyric. Uh, we're also delighted our current um, uh, initiative, Play for Ireland, is being run in association with six venues around the country. Um, so the 30 writers are all based in the six venues for the year. We have five plays being developed in each venue, and the Lyric is one of those um, is one of those venues and they're a, a great partner to work with. So I'm going to pass you over now to Rebecca. I think you're going to, are you going to use this microphone? Or, yes, no or that one? Microphone. Yeah, great, yeah. So I'll give you this. Great, thanks very much. Great, hello everyone. Um, can you all hear me okay? Great, okay, firstly, thanks very much, Fish Allen, for organising today and inviting me to speak. Um, it was absolutely brilliant for the Lyric to be included in these conversations. Um, so today, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Lyric, um, a bit more about my role there, and hopefully a lot more um, about how we support new writing. Is that useful? Great. So, <laughs> because we would have been up the creek if that wasn't. Um, so I suppose kind of a basic question is who's been to the Lyric? Oh, great. Fantastic, so I'll keep this bit really, really brief. Um, so. The Lyric Players, this is our fantastic space, um, we're very privileged to have it. Um, the Lyric Players was founded in 1951 by Mary O'Malley. Um, and I kind of want to pause for a moment because the name is actually very important. Mary O'Malley uh, was a huge um, and passionate lover of um, the works of, of Yeats. And um, that's why we're called The Lyric. So it's always been kind of a very, uh, kind of a literary theatre. Um, and uh, we like to think of it as a, as a, as a theatre for writers. Um, so the theatre was initially run out of the O'Malley's house, um, an extension into the garden, um, but by the 1960s the company's reputation was such that they were able to fundraise for a dedicated theatre on the banks of the Lagan, which opened in 1968. So this year is, is really exciting because it's the 50th anniversary of us being on that spot. Um, in 2011, after years of further fundraising, a brand new modern theatre was opened to the public. Um, I think I speak for everyone who works there that we're incredibly lucky to have the privilege to work in such a beautiful um, space. Um, so for those who don't know the theatre, um, we have two spaces. Um, the main stage holds 394 people. Uh, we produce about eight to nine of our own shows in this space each year. Um, for the last two to three years, about three of these shows, um, um, of the eight, have been, have been new plays. Um, we also have a studio space which holds up to 119 people. Um, and this is really much more versatile, um, dynamic, busy space. Um, it's used a lot by local independent companies and touring productions. And, and last year we hosted 36 visiting shows in that space. Um, so that's just really quickly a, a brief overview of the building itself. Um, but I'm here to talk to you about what I do, um, which is overseeing the literary department, um, which is a total misnomer um, because it's just me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so, uh, I joined the Lyric um, in, in August 2016 um, after working for a spell in the visual arts um, and before that at Northern Ireland Screen. Um, I was saying at the break there, I think I've got literally two months worth of saying I'm new here before I need that like has run out, that has expired. Mm -hmm. um, Theatre is my first love uh, though and I've been involved in one way or another um, since I was about 11. Um, the role of the literary manager uh, was a brand new one and, and one that was very hard fought for. Um, for decades, the Lyric has been at the forefront of commissioning and producing new writing in Northern Ireland, debuting new work by Stuart Parker, Mary Jones, Graham Reid, Christina Reid, Gary Mitchell, Conor McPherson, the prolific Rosemary Jenkinson. Uh, the list goes on and on. Um, when I started, um, the job description was incredibly broad, and to be honest, another person would have come in and done something totally different uh, with the role. Um, but for me, uh, these two things struck me, uh, oh sorry, these two things struck me uh, as absolutely fundamental uh, to, to the job. Um, so to initiate support structures for writers and theatres, um, and that's both new and established, um, and to champion, support and promote new writing in Northern Ireland, uh, by which I take to mean uh, both to support Northern Irish writers and to develop the local audience to create an appetite for new writing. Um, and in the rationale for my post even existing, uh, is this vital point. If we're to develop theatre in Northern Ireland, we must find a way of encouraging and developing new writing. Um, this point is, is so important. Uh, writers and new writing um, are, are the lifeblood of the theatre. 
Um, and despite all the economic pressures, uh, and these are considerable, um, and, and they're very much pressures in the north at the moment, um, we have to find a way to make it happen, uh, no matter how difficult uh, it can be at times, like, like now. Um, so, the biggest shift uh, really since I started has been to, to open up the theatre to new writers. Um, I think there was a sense uh, that the lyric was perhaps a bit of a closed shop, um, and it only worked with a small circle um, of tried and tested sort of big name writers. Um, and the lyric really wanted to change all that and make the theatre much more approachable and accessible to, to all writers, regardless of experience and background. Uh, so, how do we make new writing work at the lyric? We do it in three ways doing co productions and developing partnerships, offering dedicated new writing initiatives, and by commissioning writers to create new work. Um, we do about three productions each year, which are co-productions. Um, here's some examples. The Nest, uh, which was with The Young Vic in 2016, uh, which is new writing, and Far Below, which is also new writing, which is October uh, uh, just last year with The Abbey. Um, and it's very important that we forge and, and maintain co-production partnerships across uh, Ireland and the UK. Um, co-production is just a really obvious way of pulling resources and getting new work to the stage and also, sh also showing that new work to, to different audiences um, and also it's, it's great to work with different companies and different creative teams. Um, we also support independent production companies by working in association. So here we aren't providing cash support, but we are contributing by providing in-kind support like uh, rehearsal space, marketing um, and or stage management or tech support. Um, so on the right here, you have Liberal Life's production of The Sword in the Sand, um, which is a new play by Pierce Elliott, um, which is just about to close this weekend on Sunday, quick plug. Um, and in June, um, we're absolutely delighted to be supporting um, Belfast Ensemble, which is a kind of a fairly new company, to bring a new and experimental piece of theatre to the Norton uh, based on the fall of the House of Usher. And that's happening over um, the APAC conference, by the way, just if anyone's up for that. Um, so that's how we work with companies uh, to bring new writing to the stage. Um, but another big part of my role is obviously working with uh, commissioned writers. Um, Good Vibrations uh, is coming up in September. Um, that's a really exciting project, and that's a commission based on the award-winning film. And this is also a writing team that are completely new to the theatre, so it's been a great experience to work with them. Um, and there we have Rosemary Jenkinson uh, rehearsing Here Comes the Night, which was in 2016. So just again, to give you a bit of an overview, um, for the past three or so years, we've been commissioning about four to five writers per year. Now, if you go back and look at how many new plays we're producing each year, you can perhaps see that there's a bit of an issue here in that we're commissioning more work than we can actually currently produce. Um, and it was interesting hearing Jesse speak because uh, you've got 14 projects on your slate at the moment. So we've got 12, uh, which is a lot uh, for the theatre of our size and the funding we receive. And also bearing in mind, we're not, we're not kind of solely a new writing house. Um, so at the moment, a major focus for me is now bringing those projects kind of over the line and hopefully into production. Um, I just want to emphasise we're still very much open for business when it comes to commissions, um, but we'll probably be commissioning a bit less, certainly maybe this year, while we kind of focus on, on, kind of, uh, on, the, on, the, on the slate. Um, I thought this would also be useful to bear in mind for um, writers who are approaching us with kind of production-ready work. So a lot of writers come and are looking for development support, um, but often we'll get people saying, just produce me, please. Um, and uh, I always say that we all will always try uh, to find a way to produce a great script that would be relevant for our audience. Um, but this, again, is a situation I think it should be is worth bearing in mind. Um, so, new writing initiatives. In 2017, we launched the Lyric's first ever new playwrights programme with an open call for scripts. Um, which I think was, if not the first time ever, the first time in a very long time that the theatre had invited submissions. Um, we had a great response. We had over 70 scripts uh, last year, and this year we had over 100. Um, and it was a brilliant way to see who was out there, what they were writing about, what they were passionate about, um, what stage they were at, what their expectations were, um, and, and to connect with them and to build relationships with these writers. And that's very much kind of an ongoing process. Um, so the programme itself is for emerging writers. It offers six months of intensive development support with one-to-one -one feedback and peer review. Uh, the writers are also partnered with a director 
and there are two readings of their work. One is a closed table read for development purposes only, um, but the second is a public reading um, in front of an audience and invited industry. Um, just a note on the, the, the showcases we had last year in October, they were held during the Belfast International Arts Festival and um, the audience's uh, numbers were fantastic. We sold out the first weekend um, and we had numbers that if we had a show in that space we would have been pretty happy. So again, it's about kind of developing the audience for new writing, getting them excited about what's happening at the theatre and bringing them behind the scenes. Um, so I, I think, I hope it's a great opportunity for the selected writers on the programme um, to develop in a supportive atmosphere and, and get their work out there. Um, as part of the programme, there's also a masterclass series, which is absolutely free and open to all writers. Um, we get a great turnout at these, and it's a chance for writers to hear from industry professionals and also to do a bit of networking. Um, here are some of our writers from last year, uh, with Rosemary, again, who was our writer in residence last year. Um, so, uh, and Julie Campbell, who's our Arts Council representative. So, um, since the programme, they've all gone off to do really exciting things. Um, Seamus, on the, on the left there, um, was brought into BBC NI Writers' Room as a direct result of the programme. Both Seamus and Victoria, who's on the far right there, um, are part of Fish Ambles Play for Ireland, and we're glad to have them attached to us. Attached to us, like, physically. Like, <laughs> can't get away. Um, Erica, uh, in, the, in the great jumper in the middle, uh, has, has had her London debut, um, which got fantastic reviews, which compared her to David Ireland and Martin McDonough. What else could you want? Um, and she's taking work to Edinburgh this year. And Andy, who's not in this photo, unfortunately, because he was unwell that day, um, his acting career has really taken off, but we're still in touch um, about his writing and, and kind of getting draft through for him. So those are all brilliant, and I hope long-lasting relationships. Um, so here are some stills. This is our not in studio. So these are some stills just from our showcase. Um, and there's Des Kennedy gesturing, um, saying something very, very insightful and profound about the work. Um, Emma Jordan was our other director, um, and they were both absolutely fantastic, um, really brilliant with the writers and, and understanding new writing. Um, and I know the writers got a lot out of working with them. And again, I really hope those relationships are, are long lasting. Um, the new playwrights for this year are due to be announced today, I think, or this afternoon, or definitely tomorrow. Um, so I can't, I wanted to kind of do a reveal, but I, I can't. Um, so you have to keep your eyes peeled for social media. Um, but they're a really, really exciting group. It's a really good news story uh, this year, um, and we've already started work. So while the scheme this year um, is closed, it is an annual program. So we'll hopefully be launching a call for scripts in the new year, so do keep an eye out. Um, we've also got some other plans in the pipeline that I can't speak about just yet. Um, but again, please keep your eyes peeled around January, February time. Um, I kind of feel like the department is still a bit in its infancy. I, I come back to think about getting away with saying I'm new for a bit longer. Um, but we really hope to grow and expand um, to really match the talent that's out there. Um, the 100 scripts we got this year were um, of an incredible standard, um, but there are only a small number of spaces on the programme, so we're constantly looking for other ways that we can um, support writers and other theatre makers. Um, and we're always open to partnerships, by the way, just in case there's anyone out there who wants to have a chat. Um, in the meantime, our masterclass series um, is, uh, for this year's programme is ongoing. It's free and open to all, and um, any writers would be very welcome to come. Um, we're also absolutely delighted to be working with, uh, with Fish Shamble and the Play for Ireland over the next two years. Um, and we're having conversations with Fighting Words Belfast um, to create a young playwrights programme. So, um, that's my email address. Uh, please drop me a line. Um, anything to do with new writing has a dedicated section on our website. Um, it's in the About section, New Writing. Um, so do check that out. Um, and of course, all opportunities um, are announced on social media, so it pays to follow us. Um, that's about it. Thank you very much. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Maybe have a chat at lunchtime. But thank you. Thanks very much.